What's up, everybody? In this live P build guide, I'm going to be covering my Sawblade Slasher build, which is a build that boasts huge range with a good attack speed while maintaining the massive damage that you can get from great swords. The weapon used for this build is a combination of the bone cutting saw blade and bramble curved blade sword handle with both being available by area five, which is about eight hours or so into the game. The saw blade slasher focuses on dealing steady stagger damage by charging a heavy attack from far away and leaping toward the enemy to deal full stagger damage without the risk of getting hit during the charge up. Naturally, the charge attack itself does big damage and can be effectively used against normal enemies and the bone cutting saw blades normal attack has a wide range that will kill normal enemies within your level in two to three hits the main source of damage will come from the fable art furious slash this fable art will rapidly slash and slice all enemies in the aoe in front of you eight times and deal a strong finishing blow that does extra damage and stagger this attack has massive potential damage but can be easily interrupted by enemies and bosses. So it's best to use this after you stagger an enemy and instead of the fatal attack, use the fable art to do great damage. The easiest class to start this build with is Path of the Cricket Balance, since this is a balanced build, but you can turn it into a motivity weapon with a motivity crank if you so choose. Keep in mind, you cannot respect your starting class stats. So be careful and mindful of what you upgrade your stats to if you're min-maxing. Before you get this weapon, I suggest stick with the weapon you start off with in the beginning of the game. Now let's dig into the stats here for the character stats of what I've upgraded to. So you understand how this build works effectively. Now, as I said before, this is a balanced build, but I decided to switch to motivity for fun and sort of make it more like sense. In a sense, motivity is kind of like strength in this game. So, but more than a bit later. So Vitality first, I decided to get that to 33. Now you'll, you'll also see that my level is 90, which is just fine. You don't really need to go above that in this game from what I've found out so far. So I would most, if you decide to go further than that, obviously in like a new game plus run or whatever, if you want to go above that, you can. But if you're just trying to stick to like a build that isn't too OP, but not too weak either, 90, maybe 95 to 100 at most would be good, I would say. But yeah, Vitality is at 33 for health reasons. Then Vigor is at 20. Basically help with your stamina, at least a good 20. If you want to put more into that, you can. Uh, capacity is at 24 because our weight limit, and we need that. Motivity, I have it 40 with the help of use of an amulet. So initially, you want to get this to 36, I believe. And then with the amulet, it'll boost it to 40. Technique, I left alone at 9. And then advance left alone at seven. Now, if you want to go the other route and stay balanced and with motivity and technique, then you would get each of those, I believe, to 20. And everything else would stay the same. For the rest of the equipment I'm using for this build, when it comes to Legion Arms, it, it's not super important. I decided to go with Deus Ex Machina, but if you want to go with something else, feel free to. I just found this very fun to use because I would use myself as a bait. I would set these mines up as traps in a sense. And they would often help me more, more times than not to help stagger my the bosses and enemies, you know, that I'm fighting. So I really love it. Plus, it scales with motivity and technique. So that's another bonus. Amulets, you're going to need to use Carrier's Amulet plus one or at least the other version of this because the help with your weight, even though you're getting your vigor to not to vigor, sorry, capacity at 24. Uh, due to defensive parts here I have on here, that adds more weight to it. So you're going to need this to help out. You know, I believe you might be okay. Nope, you will not be okay with that. Sorry. So you will not be okay with the regular carrier's amulet. So you want the carrier's amulet plus. So you're not slightly heavy. Otherwise, the other thing is, if, like I said, if you want to go beyond 90, is put more into capacity. Like at least a few more. Maybe up to four more. That gives you like 94. That, that would be a good way to sort of help with that if you don't want to use this amulet whatsoever. Second one I would feel is if you went like I did with motivity, you got the strength amulet. Hence why motivity I feel like is a sort of like the strength stat of this game. So that's what I did. You don't have to do this whatsoever. Um, I would suggest then if like you want to stay balanced, then you probably would have this on. Take off uh, assassin's amulet that increases critical attack. I tried it out. It was pretty good. Um, this one you take off and then you would swap for technique. 
my apologies technique amulet which is kind of like i guess the dex stat of the game and advanced is possibly like more like the arcane slash magic of the game in a sense uh so to fully test those out but yeah that way you would have if you go balanced and your your technique and motivity is at 20 then these will boost it by four making them each 24. you can go that route and then i feel this is a must on any build honestly patience amulet increase stamina recovery speed not bad to have this is honestly i feel like a go-to with a lot of uh builds when it comes to souls likes and souls games you know i've used stuff like this and others like dark souls 3 bloodborne Elder Ring, like anything that can help my stamina recovery speed, yeah, I'm gonna use it as part of every build pretty much because it's so freaking good to utilize. And like I said, you can go with this. Otherwise, if you don't, you know, use the technique and go the route I did, then you'll just wanna alternate between your damage uh, boost types, such as Puppet, Destroyer's Amulet, if you're just fighting regular puppets. If you're fighting humans, Murderer, Puppets, Amulet. If you're finding the carcasses, you want to use this or a boss that essentially is going to like be weak to one of these. Or if you want to try the extra damage with the assassins, up to you. Test it out. See what you think. It's all about having fun, right? If you want to be more defensive, you can always go for Iron Wall Amulet as well. Increase physical def damage reduction rate. But this is experimenting is part of the fun here. I would at least stick with this or boost your capacity stat if you don't want to use the carrier's amulet stick with this usually and at least stick with this or this so defensive parts decided to go with the lada f350 frame here which is the highest one that helps out a lot you can understand to see why the weight 26.4 there hence why you need this or your capacity up more then a belford spear corrosion resistance converter and see there buffs a lot of like damage reduction for physical fire electric acid fire electric blitz acid resistance very good there this is also a big physical damage reduction a 37.11 then for the third one here arch disruption cartridge uh helps with physical damage reduction rate disruption resistance shock resistance break resistance and then lastly the lada fiber reinforced liner which helps with slash strike and pierce damage reduction across the board there very good arguably the i think best one overall now if you want a more specific one you can always switch this around but i found this to be the best one for this build probably going to be for most builds this will be the best one as you can see here and compare next let's talk about the p organ skill tree which you use your quartz for for this build and so first off i want to suggest is increase pulse cells that'd be very important for survivability and when it comes to what I decided to use this, I stuck with Enhanced Charge Stagger Attack as the first thing here. Then Enhanced Guard Regain Recovery 1. What was that one? But yeah, this is a good one to pick up early on ASAP. Another good one is Link Dodge. And then you can apply their Enhanced Fatal Attack 1. And then Lower Damage While Dodging 1. You don't necessarily have to put these ex those exactly in here. You can put them in the you know other one here if you want. It's just what I decided to do. But you definitely pick this up. Add Fable slots one. Very good. So you can do your Fable uh, art more often. At least get up to four. And then I will put this as Enhanced Fable Arts Attack one. And then Lower Charge Attack Stamina Consumption one. And then Increase Stackable Window. This is so great to utilize. So that way, in case you run into an issue with a boss or enemy that you staggered and can't do the Fatal Attack or can't do your Fable art right away. You increase that stack window so you stagger a longer time so you can stagger them or have more time to do so and i decided to put increased stagger duration one and enhanced pulse cell recovery one here and then i moved on to actually not that i did just yet increase pulse cells two and then i put increased pulse cells four in here and increase the maximum number of pulse cell uses and enhance table arts attack two and i decided to add amulet slot one so that way that helps me use a third amulet slot Enhanced Charge Stagger Attack 2, and then Increase Pulse Cells 3. I started putting this one. Like I said, you can put them in where you, anywhere you want as long as you, you know, utilize those. And then Retain Guard uh, Regain 1, where you know if you block, you can hit the enemy to get health back somewhere to Bloodborne. So what I decided to put in here was Lower Damage While Dodging 2, and then Special Grind Slow Weapon Durability Recovery. That's going to be much later in the game. I end up getting this late game, so I didn't, don't worry about this right away. You more so want to focus on these two. 
this can be something to get much later on towards like late game. Uh, then I went into this with enhanced pulse recovery. Sorry, enhanced pulse cell recovery too. And I decided to add perfect guard, fable charge, enhanced one, lowers guard, regain reduction two, and perfect guard, re destruction, enhanced two. And once I unlock this phase four, I went to add amulet slot two, which essentially allows me to use up to four amulets. Very useful for this build, and I would say all builds in general. Uh, and then I put in here enhanced perfect guard destruction one, enhanced fatal attack pulse cell, reach, cell charge, and then reduces stamina consumption from dash. And then next I went into increases special grindstone uses. Uh, this is end up being a late game thing because I think I actually went to this one first. Just increase stack 102 before I did this. But up to you. You can either go here or do this one uh, first, whichever you feel. But yeah, I decided to go with this because there are special grindstones you can use and you increase the number of uses form is very helpful. At least up to two. Instead of just one. Uh, lowers natural recovery upon weapon attack. One I decided to put in here and then enhanced guard regain recovery two. And perfect guard fable charge enhanced two. And then as I said, I want to go into increased stagger window two. And I put in here increased stagger duration two, increased pulse cells five. Fatal attack fable charger and then special grants will increase effect duration. So that way that lasts longer because there's one particular that helps temporary boot, you know, automatically when you block, you essentially counter enemy attacks even bosses so it's freaking fantastic um but yeah that's where the build is for this um i was unfortunately not able to get all 28 of quartz so i could have went to something else if i got all 28 uh i think i like short i missed one or two but it's still fine you know you can still work with this just fine with this how, how this setup is and you can uh, honestly experiment with you know shake things things up i didn't use any of the item stuff i used stuff with attack so I stuck with mainly attack type, survival type, and ability type. I did not mess with item type really, except for like one thing, I think. Because I wasn't really trying to have this build be focused on items. I'd rather be focused on these three instead. So it doesn't mean that you couldn't do that if you want to go into item types and mess around with that if you want. Experiment. Hopefully this was helpful to you in wanting to try out this type of build. I've got more builds coming to you ASAP as I'm working on this. I got more balanced build types with different weapons here. So stay tuned for that. If you enjoyed this, please smash that like and help push the video out there more. Subscribe if you're new and hit the bell for notifications so you'll miss any of my content here. And my name is Mike. Thank you for watching.